Hello, demons and death dealers. My name is TBS Kine, and um, I'm going to be doing a full "What's the Deal with a Trucks" video once he's actually, once his rework is actually released, because that's the point when Riot will also be releasing his new updated color story and the new updated biography, so we can talk something about how well the new design executes on the themes and the concepts that are being set up in his actual underlying lore. But I thought I would do a little bit of a video ahead of time, talking about the differences from old Aatrox to new Aatrox, talking about some of the design changes, what they mean, why they might have been made, and, and what they mean for the character design. <clears throat> and I'm doing that for a few reasons. First of all, because people have been asking me to do it, which is often a decent way to get me to do something. Secondly, because there was a fairly popular upvoted thread on the subreddit with people complaining about the new design and, and talking about how they felt like the old design was better, it was cooler, it was just it was just more interesting, they, they prefer it over the new one, and threads like that always crop up, like any anytime anything changes, like I, when new news update arrives, someone's gonna make a thread about, oh, I'm so sad we don't have the old new new anymore, and much as I sound dismissive right now, I'm actually, I'm not here to tell you that if you like old a trucks, you're wrong. I prefer the new one, but you're not, it's not, if you like it, you like it. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not you're not dumber than other people for that reason. This is not a top ten reasons why you if you don't like new A truck, you're stupid list. Uh, it's just I want to talk about some of the reasons why they might have cha been changed. Why I think they're an upgrade, and you know some of the stuff that that might mean for the character design. And the first thing about A to, to remember when we're talking about the character design is that when he was first released. And this is only very slightly speculation on my part. Riot didn't know what the hell the Darken were supposed to be. They didn't know really know what they were supposed to be. They didn't know what they wanted to do with them. They didn't know how they fit into the universe. They didn't have a unified aesthetic for what Darken were supposed to look like. And this is speculation. I don't believe that's ever actually been officially confirmed, but it's pretty well-founded speculation. As those who were around for Aatrox's initial release might remember, Riot released him and teased a whole bunch of stuff about his connection to Trindamir and sort of oh, the Darken were this ancient race of demons and they had a mural that showed up on someone's rift and then uh, then nothing happened for a very very long time absolutely nothing happened there were no more Darken champions released there was no lore update telling us anything about Aatrox there was nothing telling you about his relationship with Trindamir how he fits into the lore of the world or why he's important or anything he was just kind of left to sit there and rot, and nothing happened. And again, for me, that's a very strong indication that Riot actually didn't really know what the hell they wanted to do with him. They just kind of, they, they had a cool idea for a champion, and then they made up some lore for him and released him, and then the next step was like, ooh, mm, now what do we do? That, if, from an outside perspective, anyway, that's very much what it looks like. Whereas with new Aatrox, because there have been a full darkened champion in, in uh, Kane Rast, released since then and a lore update to Varys making him a Darken as well they've kind of developed finally a, a more solid idea of what they want the Darken to be what they want the Darken to look like and that's informed the new design which is why which is part of the reason why I think the new design is is much more coherent it makes a lot more sense whereas the old design was a little bit messy in a lot of ways so um the first and most noticeable change from old Aatrox to new Aatrox, and these comparison images, by the way, were made by a Reddit user called uh, Who Is Tired, who posted them on, on the aforementioned thread. Very useful. The most obvious change is that Aatrox no longer has his wings, or more specifically, his wings are mostly not present. He has his wings, new Aatrox has wings when he uses his ultimate. That's when they show up. Uh, that's when he uses them, and they look much more like what you would imagine a standard pair of demon wings to look like. Whereas old Aatrox has these weird things. Now, um, these wings don't really look a lot like wings, and that's because they're not supposed to. What these wings represent is war banners. That's really essentially the, the concept of what the wings are supposed to look like. They are war banners. They're, they're the stuff that you see on a battlefield. It's very much something that's meant to connect him to his place on the battlefield, his, his connection to war, um, which is part of the reason why they're also all, you know, torn up and ragged is supposed to represent the fact that he's got battle damage going on. And um, there's a couple of problems with that. The first one becomes fairly obvious once we do this. Okay, maybe it's not... 
as obvious as I'd like to think it is, but take a look at how his wings look from the front and the back. And now look at how they look from the side. It's a very different profile, right? First of all, it messes with his color profile. From the front and from the back, Aatrox is sort of pretty much a 50-50 blend of, you know, gunmetal grays and, you know, dark blood red. But from the side, all of a sudden, like, the majority of the red color on his model just kind of disappears and suddenly becomes very, very invisible. And especially from this side, he becomes utterly dominated by the gunmetal gray. And that's, from a design perspective, that's a little bit of a problem um, because it means you have a character who looks completely different from different angles. Like, not just in terms of everybody looks different from different angles unless they're a sphere, that's normal, but a character who just completely changes their color profile and who also changes their silhouette. That's the other thing that's kind of the issue here, is that from the front, Aatrox has a very specific silhouette with the wings kind of forming these big surfaces behind him, or indeed in front of him, that are very much a part of his silhouette along with the sword and along with, you know, the horns, and, and sort of very easily identifiable. But from the side, all of a sudden, those giant surfaces are not there anymore. They're, they just kind of vanish, and instead he has these spindly, sort of spider-looking arms sticking out of his back, rather than looking like wings at all. <clears throat> and that, again, is a little bit of a problem when it comes to maintaining the identifiability of the design. And in terms of game readability, it can also cause a minor issue, because it means that when a player needs to learn to recognize the profile of the character, and, and you might know this, in game design, generally it's considered that the outline the silhouette of a, of a of a character in a game should be very distinct from other silhouettes in order to communicate to the player the differences in gameplay that they're expected to employ between these different characters because if two characters have an extremely similar silhouette then at a glance in a chaotic situation you're going to have trouble telling them apart and you're going to have trouble determining like there's going to be a little millisecond half second of lag as your brain tries to figure out Oh, which one is which? What am I supposed to do with each of them? Which is why game designers in general, when it comes uh, comes to video games, will try to keep the outlines, the silhouettes of characters as different as possible. This is something that's very heavily on display in a game like Overwatch, where no two characters have, a, have silhouettes that are at all alike. This is something the Overwatch designers are very conscious of. And it varies from game to game. Like, you can't for instance, do it so much in Call of Duty, where everybody is a soldier running around in war fatigues, but they do make an effort to vary the silhouettes of different characters so that at a glance you can tell what kind of gameplay you're supposed to employ. It also, also in Call of Duty, the gameplay you're supposed to employ against all other players is always shoot them with a gun. Whereas in a game like League of Legends, it's very different how you deal with an approaching AD carry. Uh, compared to an assassin, compared to a tank, compared to a support. So it's it's more important that you can read the character designs at a glance. Anyway, all of this to say that comparing the silhouette of old Aatrox and how much it changes from angle to angle with the silhouette of new Aatrox and how much that changes from angle to angle, it's still, again, no character looks the same from all angles because, of course, they don't. Unless they're a sphere, there are differences. But New Age Trunks is, generally speaking, much more identifiable, like much easier to read as being the same character. And something you'll notice is also that from every angle, New Age Trunks also preserves his color profile a lot better than Old Age Trunks does, because Old Age Trunks relies so much on the wings for that red. But New Age Trunks, because he has this... Uh, New Age Trunks is much more bright, first of all. He's got a much more brightened up color scheme, which makes it which I think is meant to help him stand out a little bit more from Summoner's Rift itself, whereas the more drab colors of old day trucks sort of not, they don't really pop as much from the background, uh, which is, I think is part of the design decision. But also, new way trucks stands out better. He's much brighter. Um, he maintains, like, there's much more of a balance between the red and the gray from any given angle on new way trucks than there is on old day trucks. Because, like I said, from one angle, he's almost completely gunmetal gray, and from another angle, he's much more dominated by the red. <clears throat> this leads us to the question of, this, of um, the armor design. New Aatrox has what I would call a much more smooth uh, armor design, a much more smoothed out kind of armor design. Like, you've, you've got these big metal plates that are generally sort of fairly... They're 
they're spiky still, but they're not nearly as spiky as all this, this, uh, oops, that's Rust, we're talking about him later, as all the spikes that are going on with the old Aatrox. Old Aatrox is just Spike City, like there's just nothing but spikes going on with him everywhere. Everything he's done, he, everything he's got is just a, like either an edge or a spike. Or uh, something that can stab you or something that can slash you. And there's a reason for that. Old Aatrox's um, gameplay revolved very much around his blood well and around using and sacrificing, uh, draining and sacrificing HP. That was, there was his, his gameplay mechanic was he would drain life with one mode and then he would expend HP to do more damage with another mode. And so it makes sense that a lot of his character design is themed around bloodletting and blood draining. As indeed you can see going on here in his splash art where he's literally draining the blood on a battlefield. Um, and that's part of the reason why he's so spiky and, and edgy literally edgy, full of edges, because that's that's a gameplay communication. It's something that's supposed to communicate. This guy likes to drain people of blood. He likes to cause bleeding to happen. That's very much a part of, of his concept, which is something that New Age Trunks doesn't really do. He still has the blood well, but instead of being his passive, as, as in something that's active almost all the time, it's something that only happens when he uses his ultimate. And in instead of having like a bloodletting and blood absorbing thing going on, I think on the Q on Old Aatrox, which was literally called, I think, uh, Blood Drain or something like that. He's just got, you know, some Riven Qs and all kinds of other stuff that really doesn't mesh at all with the old sort of blood draining vampire creature that Old Aatrox very much was. And so for that reason, you really don't need all this spike stuff to communicate that part of his character design because it's not there anymore. And consequently, New Aatrox has a very different sword, um, which is something that is being used here as a very different part of his silhouette. With Old Aatrox, again, because for a lot of his gameplay, his sword is going to be in his hand all, almost all the time, it's constantly a, a very noticeable part of his silhouette kind of jutting out. And that's actually something that helps his design. It, it's part of what makes him recognizable, is you can always look for the sword. And new Age Trunks have designed it on a different way of using it. The sword is now attached to his back quite a lot of the time when he isn't in combat, and that it still has an interesting effect because it creates that war banner effect a little bit for me. Like, it, it, it is again that thing of, of a powerful war leader having a thing that raises above the battlefield and kind of marks him out amongst the rabble. It's not quite as on the nose as the old war banners of old Aatrox were, but when you look at him, you can still see that there is this... It almost creates like a devil halo around his head with the spikes that jut out around the sword there, kind of interplaying with his horns and giving him this little this little pointer that just kind of points him out. So there's there's still that little that little hint of this thing as here I am, this is me. You can recognize me by this feature of my character. It's uh, sim similar to um if you know Dawn of uh, not Dawn of War uh, Warhammer 40,000. The characters in the empire used to at least uh have a thing called an iron halo, uh, which was part of the, 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 the armor design on the Space Marines. And it's kind of the same thing that's going on here. It's not a war banner, but it's still a, a symbol, a personal symbol that raises itself above the rest of him. Anyway, that's the whole extended thing that's really supposed to go in what's the deal with Aatrox video. And um, so his armor design is much smoother. There's much less, there's much fewer spikes going on. There's much less spikiness, um, which is something that also extends to the changes in his horn design. In this old design, the horns kind of jut forward as these big sort of flat slicing blades that kind of attach to the side of his head. Um, and they, from the side, they kind of act like blinders on a horse, um, which... I always thought it looked kind of weird. Like, from the front, they look fucking amazing. Like, they look absolutely excellent. They have this wonderful, distinctive spiked shape that really frames his face and makes his head very identifiable. Like, from... Uh, and this is something that's important, again. When you want people to identify a character as a character, as being alive, a face is a really, really good tool for that because the human brain is hardwired to look for faces. It's, it's why... Um, there is a whole thing called pareidolia. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but it's, it's the tendency of humans to see faces in objects. There are whole subreddits dedicated to this thing because we are programmed to look for faces. We want to see faces. That's literally the first thing the brain does when it looks at any given image is scan, are there any faces here? And if there are, they're the first thing the brain looks at. Uh, that, that they've done like a, 
um, mapping scans of the human eye as it looks on images. And pretty much in all cases, human eyes are drawn to the face. So when you obscure the face, the human eye is like, oh, wait a minute, what's that? Oh, right, I can see it's got arms and legs and stuff, so I can tell that it's a person. But the face is, is, the, is the first identifier. And again, from just a design cleanliness perspective, when you want the character to obviously be not necessarily human, but a person, obscuring the face can be a bad idea because it forces the brain to work a little bit harder to identify the thing that it sees as being a person at all. Like, this looks like a modern art sculpture, for all I know. Whereas, because I can just see the glint of the eyes, I can just see the, the outline of the face over here, my brain recognizes somewhat faster, oh, that that's a person, I can recognize this, this is the shape of a head a little bit easier. And it's not much, like, it's not a huge, glaring, like, oh, old Atrox was terrible, new Atrox has solved the problem kind of thing. It's just, it's a general little effort to clean him up a little bit. Um, and that, I think that very much plays into, from what I've listened to of the voice lines of new Aatrox, he is much more the conqueror. Like, he, he's, he's this, you know, giant warlord striding over the battlefield, just mowing down opponents left and right, untouchable, undefeatable, undestroyable. Whereas old Aatrox, especially with the tattered war banners hanging from, from his, um... Uh, from from his back and and especially with with like the spiky armor design and sort of the scrappy brawler aesthetic that's going on he looks less like the conquering warlord and more like the mad berserker at the front lines which is which is what was supposed to be his connection with trindamir is that he caused trindamir to become a berserker we think it was very vague but um that's very much the impression I get from this design, is that this one is much more the frontline psychopath, just swinging his sword around, screaming, killing everything, absorbing their blood, and, rah, and then you kill him and he falls down, but he gets up again and rah, keeps going. That's very much the, the impression I get from this one, is that he's the dangerous frontline scrapper. Like, that, that dangerous skirmisher guy. Whereas this guy, and there's, there's a couple of uh, parts to this. First of all, because you can see old Aatrox... His entire character model tilts towards his sword. Like, that's literally, you see his posture here, all of it is tilted towards the sword. His his upper body sways towards the sword. He makes a little bit of space here to, to make the sword more, more visible. The same thing happens from the side. A lot of his character model is about the weapon. But with new Aatrox, what's the most prominent feature on the character, pretty much from every single angle? It's his clenched fist. It's this clenched, powerful warlord fist it's it's a fist of of it's, it's a gesture of power it's a gesture of domination to have that clenched fist out in front of him and also his posture is very different you can see old atrox is kind of because he's kind of slumping over for the sword all the time and that's very much part of the posture he has a very different bearing than this atrox who's kind of he's puffed his chest out he's got this very proud posture it's like Hit me, I can take it. That's that's kind of what, what this posture is saying. It's a it's again, it's a dominant posture, it's a posture of power. It's the kind of thing that if you read a management instructional book or go to a management seminar with some ins inspirational speaker, they'll say, Oh yeah, do a power pose before a meeting and it'll really pump you up. This is a power pose. Like that's what this is. This is him exposing himself intentionally and saying, I'm so confident, I know you can't hit me anyway. Like, that's what I'm getting from this design over here, whereas this guy He's much more of a, I'm gonna fucking kill you and I don't give a shit what you think about me kind of situation. And that's something I get from the voice lines for New Way Trucks as well, is that from his voice lines, he's a much more demonstrative character. He's someone who's much more, he's got some grievances. He's pissed off and he wants people to know about it. He keeps talking to people. He keeps taunting people. He goads people into fighting him. He insults people. Like he's very much a, a much more powerful personality that wants to announce himself, which is why it makes sense that he's much more exposed and bright as compared to the much darker more drab version of old Aatrox, who's not really interested in that stuff so much as he's interested in just finding something and killing it. Anyway, I think that's uh, that's about all I, I really have to say about the comparison between the two. But one of the reasons why new Aatrox looks so different is this. It's Rast. Rast is a big reason why new Aatrox looks so different. Compare what Rast looks like generally. Like compare the how the armor and how the spikes and how the general design of Rast looks with old Aatrox compared to new Aatrox. It's also a thing of they released Rast and they gave that darken a certain aesthetic. And it became very noticeable that Rast's aesthetic as a darken 
very different from Aatrox's aesthetic as a Darkin. And when they want the race to be unified, when they wanted to make this make it this conquered race of demons sleeping in weapons that are ready to wake up and take over a new host and unleash their wrath upon the world, you want them to have a much more similar aesthetic because old Aatrox kind of looks like he could come from Noxus to me. Like he kind of looks like he could just jump straight out of Noxus with, with the very dark black gray colors and the red and stuff that's going on. He's very closely identified with that, whereas with new Aatrox, they've tried a lot harder to work him over to be more similar to the aesthetic profile of Rast, which is less gothic spiky and more organic spiky, um, which is something like, because this, this armor right here on Aatrox the Old looks like it was forged. Like, this looks like someone stood in a smithy and... Ting, 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 banged out these armor pieces and and made this armor and made the sword to look that way. Whereas new Aatrox, because of the much more curvy flowing lines that are going on, especially with his horns, notice how much the, these curves kind of flow into each other and kind of work out. They look much more like they were grown on his head. Like they're much more inspired by the horns of, you know, typical depictions of dragons and stuff like that. And the same thing really goes for the rest of his armor and his gauntlets. Like, that stuff looks more like it was... If he was a bug or something, that's what his carapace would look like. It, they look more naturalistic. They look more smooth, flowing. Which is something like... Which is why Rast looks like a freaking hammerhead shark, right? It's, it's... He's got these much more organic curves and stuff going on. And that's part of what's supposed, I think, in the updated aesthetics that Riot are going for. is supposed to distinguish the red and, and gray and dark Darkin from the red and gray and dark of Noxus is that Noxus tends to be much more forged. It's much more something that looks like some smith was working on it, and they have these monolithic, like, big, big color profiles and stuff going on. They're supposed to look much more man-made, whereas the Darkin are supposed to look much more organic. That's my impression, anyway. It's something that Noxus also is a region that is aesthetically somewhat inconsistent with itself with a lot of its champions so there's still a lot of work to do there but i think that's the concept that they're going for is is man-made versus organic where the darken tend towards the much more organic which is also something that comes across a little bit with old atrox you can kind of see how it looks like the armor is kind of growing out of his skin um and grafted onto him rather than being um rather than being something that he's wearing, it's something that's a part of him. And I think they're trying to lean into that a little bit more with new Aatrox. Whereas with old Aatrox, it really kind of wasn't visible that the armor was supposed to be attached to him in the same way. Anyway, I think that's about all I really have to say. Is As a TLDR, new Aatrox has been changed to work better with the general aesthetics of the Darken as a whole, and he's been changed to work better with the sort of the new aesthetic of the conqueror rather than the scrappy blood-sucking madman on the front lines and he's and he's been changed to clean him up a lot to brighten him up to clean him up to make him look more in line with modern league of legends aesthetics like they've also league of legends aesthetics in general have, have also cleaned themselves up a lot since the old days they've, they've gone much more for an aesthetic that's much more along these much cleaner lines right here than the very kind of scrappy version over here and it's really, again, I'm not here to tell you that the old Aatrox was bad and that you're wrong for thinking that he's cool, but I'm just here to tell you that I think the new one works a lot better as a holistic part of League of Legends than the old one does, who was very much his own thing and who never really became anything else. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point, so thank you very much for watching. That was a lot longer of a video than I thought it was going to be. If you're so inclined, uh, I have a Patreon where you can support this channel so you can make sure that I make more videos, you know, going in depth with design discussions between characters in the media games, which is one of the things I do here. If you want more than that, you can get a dollar a month, whatever, and you get to go to the Discord and you get to save up the money that you donate so you can buy a commission of art from me or make me make a video. That's also something that's going to be an option. And if not, that's completely okay. You can like the video, you can subscribe, all of that helps me out a great deal as well. And there is also a dislike button, but if you touch that dislike button, you're going to be locked in a mortal struggle with the demon that possesses the dislike button, and you're basically going to be spending the next 10 years of your life just fighting it for control. And if you win, you will be blessed with unimaginable power, but if you lose, 
it's going to take over your body and turn you into another dislike button, and you're going to be appearing underneath my next video. So I'm just saying, choose your fate wisely. Wisely. Damn it.